This lecture is on phase portrait and vector field diagram of second order dynamical systems. Phase portraits and vector fields are convenient ways to visualize second order dynamical systems, which are dynamical systems with two state variables. Consider a two-dimensional time-invariant nonlinear system x dot equals f of x, where x is a two-dimensional state vector containing the state variables x1 and x2, and f is a vector that tells us how x changes. We first explain what a vector field diagram is. For any given point x in the space, we can calculate the value of the vector f at x and draw an arrow originating from x that shows how x changes. If we repeat this for every point covering the grid, we obtain a vector field diagram for the dynamical system. Note that the length of arrows are not the same. If an arrow is short, then it means that x changes slowly at this point, and if it's long, it means it changes quickly. Using this information, we can construct the solution of this dynamical system starting at a given initial condition. We construct a trajectory by moving along the vector field at x0 and repeat this for the next points. The family of all trajectories is called the phase portraits of the system. So phase portraits contain trajectories of a system for a large number of initial conditions spread over the x1, x2 plane. From these two diagrams, we can see that all trajectories starting near the origin converge to the origin. So the origin is an attractive equilibrium point. We can also determine the stability of the origin from these diagrams. From the stability definition given in the previous lectures, we see that the origin is stable as for any given epsilon, we can choose a set of initial conditions denoted by a green ball with radius delta, such that all solutions starting from the green ball remain in the purple ball for all time. Since the origin is both a stable and an attractive equilibrium point, we conclude it's an asymptotically stable equilibrium point. To learn more about the stability definitions of an equilibrium, see the link at the top corner of the screen or in the description below. As shown in this example, we could extract information about the equilibrium point of a system and their stability properties. The dynamical model of this example is x1 dot equals minus x1 and x2 dot equals minus x2. So the solutions of this system, starting from the initial condition x1 of 0 and x2 of 0, are x1 of t equals x1 of 0 times e to the minus t, and x2 of t equals x2 of 0 times e to the minus t. So the origin is not only asymptotically stable, but also exponentially stable. However, we couldn't show the exponential stability of a system using phase portrait or vector field diagram. Let's go to the pendulum with friction example that we studied earlier in the equilibrium points video. A link to this video is at the top corner of the screen. We explained that the state equations of the system are in this form, where x1 is the angle theta and x2 is theta dots. We showed that this system has equilibrium points at x1 equals n pi, where n is an integer and x2 equals zero. The equilibrium points are shown in the x1, x2 plane, which is also known as the state plane or the phase plane. We use the MATLAB function quiver to plot the vector field diagram for this system. We can now start from an initial condition and follow the direction of the vectors in the vector field to find the trajectory of the system from the initial condition. Let's just start with an initial condition at x1 of 0, which is the angle theta at time 0 equals to minus 3 pi over 4, and x2 of 0, which is the initial angular velocity of the bob equals to 0. We can see from the trajectory plot that the states x1 and x2 tend to the origin as time goes to infinity. Let's now consider another initial condition with the same x1 of 0 as before, but with x2 of 0 equals 2. We can see the bob oscillates again, 
and the oscillation is more than the previous case, but the states converge again to the origin as time goes to infinity. By looking at the arrow directions for larger x2 values, we can observe that if the initial angular velocity is large, then the bob makes one or more full rotations and then converges to another equilibrium point. For example, if x2 of 0 equals 4, the bob completes one full swing and then rests at the equilibrium at x1 equals 2 pi and x2 equals 0. We now plot the phase portrait of the system on top of the vector field diagram. Using the phase portrait, we can see the trajectories of the system for a large number of initial conditions. The vector field, however, has some information that the phase portrait doesn't. It shows us how quickly or slowly x changes in the plane. This can be inferred from the length of the arrows. Let's now check the stability of the equilibrium points using the phase portrait plots and the stability definitions. The equilibrium points at x1 equals 0 and x1 equals minus 2 pi and 2 pi are attractive equilibrium points. They are also stable according to the stability definition. For any given epsilon, there exists a positive delta such that the solutions starting in the green bowl with radius delta stay in the purple bowl with radius epsilon for all time. If we are given a larger epsilon, we can still choose a small delta as before and the condition in the definition holds. Trajectories starting in the green ball still remain in the larger purple ball. So these three equilibrium points are all asymptotically stable. It can be shown that the other two equilibria at x1 equals minus pi and pi are unstable. See the instability definition from the previous lectures and a more detailed phase portrait around the equilibrium at x1 equals minus pi and try to prove this equilibrium is unstable. Let's now summarize what we've learned in this lecture. Vector fields and phase portraits can be used to observe the behavior of a system such as the stability properties of equilibrium points. The rate of change of the states and the convergence rate of solutions are not shown in phase portraits although this can be partially understood from the length of the arrows in the vector field. Finally, vector fields and phase portraits are used for two-dimensional systems, but their concepts can be used for higher-dimensional systems as well.